This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this simple flat style comet graphic using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So we'll minimize this and we'll get started here in Inkscape. And by the way if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons a link to that information will be in the description of the video. So to get started the first thing we want to do is make sure the view is set to custom. Then we'll zoom in at one to one. Then we'll open up our line of distribute menu. And we'll want last selected chosen from this drop down for, the, uh, for this tutorial. And then we'll open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu. So the first thing we want to create is a rectangle. We're going to create the individual pieces of this rectangle here. So let's grab the squares and rectangles tool and just click and drag on the canvas to create a rectangle like that. Then we'll go to the select tool and where it says W and H, width and height, we want to make the width of this 800 and then hit tab to skip over to height and we'll make the height of this 40, so it's going to be 800 by 40. We'll bring the opacity of this down in half and we'll go, to the, we'll go back to the squares and rectangles tool and we'll grab this little handle here in the top right and just bring that all the way down so it has rounded edges, rounded corners like that. And once, uh, then once we've done that, we can convert that to a path by going to Path, Object to Path. And we can go to the Select tool. And we want to make nine copies of this, but they have to be in alternating color. So let's right-click that and go to Duplicate and turn that red. Hold Control on the keyboard and click and drag this down here. And then hold Shift and click on the black copy and click on this button down here that says Align Top Edges um, of the Object to the Bottom Edge of the Anchor. So it stacks it up on top of it like that. And we're going to need nine of these, so let's duplicate, with both of these selected, let's just hit Control D to duplicate them, and we'll group them together, group selected objects, hold Control and click and drag them down here, and then hold Shift and click on the red object, and again we'll align the top edges, and let's click and drag over all of those, right click, duplicate, uh, group them together, and then hold Control and click and drag them down to here, and then hold shift and click on that red object down there and again align the bottom edge to the uh, align the edges to the bottom edge of the anchor and uh, we're going to need one more because this is eight so we're, we'll click on this one right click duplicate hold shift click on this red object down there and again we're going to click that button to align them together like that and we're going to want uh, an extra copy down here just as a, uh, a backup to you so we'll right click that go to duplicate hold control and just click and drag that down to there. What we could do now is click and drag over all of those uh, rectangles and let's just ungroup them. I'll click on group a few times to make sure that they're all ungrouped. And what we want to do now is right click them and go to copy. And then we'll go back to the squares and rectangles tool and we're going to create another rectangle. We'll make it like that. We'll just turn this one green. Let's click this button up here to make the, uh, the corner sharp. And then we'll go to edit paste size and we'll click on paste size and it'll take the objects that we had copied and paste the size of them into, the, into it like that so that's pretty good so we'll go back to the select tool hold shift click on this black object up top we're gonna align the top edges and then align the right sides like that and then click off of it to deselect everything so what we want to do now is take this green rectangle and we'll duplicate that you can just hit control D and we'll make that blue and we'll go to the squares and rectangles tool and grab this little top right uh, node and just bring that all the way down so that it's rounded almost like a circle and convert that to a path, go to path, object to path then we'll create another rectangle going over about half of about half of it like that make the corner sharp and go to the select tool and I'll duplicate this by hitting control D and then hold shift and click on the other blue object and go to path difference. So we have a, a broken piece like that. And then what we want to do is take this blue other blue object and just move this to the right a little bit and then hold shift and click on the, uh, the green shape and go to path intersection. And then we'll hold shift and click on the blue shape and go to path union. And now we have the shape of what's going to be the comet. So what we could do now is we could send that to the bottom, lower selection to the bottom, 
And then we can click on the black object up here and then hold shift and click on all of the black rectangles. So we have them all selected. And you'll know you'll have them all selected because you'll see a black stripe down here in the bottom left corner. If you accidentally click a red one as well, it'll turn like a dark purple shade and we don't want that. So make sure you only have the black object selected and go to uh, Path, Union. And then we want to click on the green object in the background. Uh, you might have to hold Alt and click to grab it. You'll know you have it grabbed and you see the green stripe down here. And once you have that selected, hit Control D to duplicate that. And then hold Shift and click on the black objects and go to Path, Intersection. So that the black objects now take the form of the shape that we're going to use for the comet there. And what we could do now is let's click on that green object again. I'm going to hold Alt and click again just to make sure we have that selected. We'll go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And I'm going to click and drag over these two nodes here on the left and hold control and just click and drag these to the right so that they're going past the crease from where this, uh, these two um, curves meet. We want the edge of the green border going past that. So somewhere like this distance, that's pretty good. Then we go back to the Select tool. And what we're going to do now is take this red shape and then hold control. And uh, you know what? Let's hold Shift and click on all of the red shapes. And then hold control and move them all the way out to the left out here. And then click off of it to deselect. Now we'll take just this red shape. Um, you know what? We'll leave that one where it is. We'll take just this red shape here and hold control and move this to the left a little bit. And then we'll hold, uh, hold control. Uh, we'll take this red shape actually, then hold control and move this off to the left as well. Like that. And then we could hold shift and click on all of the red shapes. And go to path. Union, and then hold shift and click on the green shape, and go to Path, Difference. And now what we could do is take these black objects up here, with them selected, we'll go to Path, Break Apart. And we now have the shape of the outside of the comet. So now we have to make the shape of the inside. So uh, to do that, let's take this red object that we created, this backup copy, we'll just hit Control D to duplicate that. And we'll put this up here going between the two black objects. And just to make sure that it fits in there perfectly, just hold shift and click on the other black object. And we'll align the, uh, align the top edges of the objects to the bottom edge of the anchor. Click on that. Click off of that to deselect. And we can leave that right there where it is. We want to have it spaced out a little bit further than where the green shape ends. And then we can go to the Edit Pads by Nodes tool. Click and drag over these nodes right here and just hold control and just move them into about here. We'll go back to the Select tool. Uh, we could duplicate this object by hitting Control D, and then hold Shift and click on this second, this second one from the bottom, this black object down here, and we'll align those top edges as well, like that, and then click off of it to deselect. So what we want to do now is click on this red shape, and then hold Shift and click on that red shape, so we have them both selected. We want to go over here to where it says H, and take note of whatever that that number is. That the height should be 280. So we're going to create a circle that that's that's that size now. So we'll go to the Circles and Ellipses tool and hold Control and Shift and click and drag to create a perfectly symmetrical circle like that. We'll go to the Select tool and we'll come back up here. We'll turn this lock on to lock the proportions and we'll just make this the same height that those objects were, which was 280. So 280, hit Enter. And I'm just going to move this over here and I'm going to hold Shift and click on the red shape and I'm going to click the button that says Align the Top Edges like that and then click off of it to deselect. And then just take the blue circle and just hold control and just move it over a little bit. We might have to edit these red shapes a little bit. You notice how the red shape is coming out of the blue circle right there? Uh, what we could do now is just, let me click off of that to deselect. We'll go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool and click on just the red shape. Grab those three nodes right there and just hold control and move that in so it's going inside the blue circle. Same thing with this one down here. Click on that, grab those nodes, hold control, move them in about that much. And click, uh, go back to the select tool. And what we'll do now is we'll grab this red object. We'll duplicate this again. We'll hit control D. We'll put this up here. Then hold shift and click on that black object and we'll align the um, top edges to the uh, bottom edge of the anchor. Click off it to deselect. And let's go back to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool and click on just this red object and click and drag those nodes 
and hold control and just bring them all the way in about that much. We're going to create like these little dot shapes, like as you see here, you know, these little dot like objects. So that's what we'll do there. We'll go back to the select tool. Uh, we'll duplicate that by hitting control D, hold control and move this over about that much. We'll duplicate that again, control D, hold control, move that over about that much. And then we'll go to the edit paths by nodes tool and grab these three nodes on the right. Hold control and just click and drag these into the blue object like that. And we'll go back to the select tool. Let's take this red object, hit control D to duplicate that and hold shift and click on this black object up here in the center. And we will align the top edges like that click off of that to deselect and I'll click on this red object here and I'll go to the edit paths by nodes tool click and drag over these three nodes and just hold control and move these to the right and what I'll do next is I'll go back to the select tool I'll grab one of these little dot objects right here hit control D to duplicate that and put this one down here hold shift and click on the black object above it just so we can make sure it fits between them nicely Again, we're going to be using this one a lot here. Align top edges of object to the bottom edge of the anchor like that. That's pretty good. Click off it to deselect. And maybe I'll just move that over a little bit. And I'm going to duplicate that object by hitting Control D. Hold Control, move this over here. And we'll go back to the Edit Pads by Nodes tool. Click and drag over those three. Just hold Control and just move them over about that much. I'd say that's pretty good. So. Let's go back to the select tool and click off of the graphic to deselect everything. What we want to do now is if you notice these rectangles over here in the far left are all lined up vertically like that. We want to have them, uh, you know, being a little uh, varied in length and shape as well. So uh, let's click on, um, let me see how I had that arranged. All right, so let's grab uh, this, this red object right here. Hit control D to duplicate that put this up here and we'll turn this black just so it matches the other ones for now hold shift click on the black object right there align the top edges and we move over a little bit I'll take this red object hit control D to duplicate that turn that black put this up here hold shift click on the other black object next to it just so we can line it align it the top edges like that that's pretty good and I'll just move that over a little bit let me see how the other ones looked. Okay, so we'll take this one right here. This can stay how it is. We'll take this one, hit Control D to duplicate that, and we'll skip this one and put this over here. Hold Shift, click on that black object, align the top edges, click off it to deselect, and I'll just move this over a little bit. I'll duplicate that again by hitting Control D, hold Control, move this to the left a little bit, and we'll see what I did over here. Um, Okay, so we'll just leave those as it is for now. You know, we'll take this one and we'll press, uh, we'll, we'll pr I'll go back to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, click and drag those three nodes and just hold Control and bring that out a little bit as well. And what we want to do now is, let's go back to the Select tool and let's click on this black object and then hold Shift and click on the other black objects beneath it so we have all of them selected. And then, while, and then we're going to want to hold Shift and click on the green object as well and unify that all together by going to path union so we end up with something like this and what we could do now is uh, we could hold shift and click on these black objects as well unify them together by going to path union and one final step here would be to put some more objects between where these red objects are because if you look at the thumbnail you'll notice there's a, a rounded rectangle shape going into the comet center right there so to do that, we'll just click on this. We'll, we'll take our, our uh, object right here. Let's just turn that black, raise that to the top, put this up here, hold shift, click on the red object, align top edge of the object to the bottom edge of the anchor like that, click off of it to deselect. Maybe I'll move that over a little bit. And then we'll duplicate that by hitting control D and then hold shift and click on this red object right here, the second one up from the bottom. And we'll align those, we'll align the black object to the bottom edge of that as well. Click off of that to deselect. Click on just this black object, hit Control D to duplicate that. And hold Shift, click on this red object, the second one from the top. Align the top, align that to the bottom edge of the red object. 
click off of it to deselect, and we'll hold control and take this middle black object and just bring this to the left a little bit like that. And then we could hold shift and click on all of the black objects, all three of them, so we have them all selected, and go to path, union, and then hold shift and click on the blue circle and go to path, difference. And now we could hold shift and click on all of the red objects. So we have them all selected and we'll unify them all together by going to path, union. And now we can click and drag over this whole thing, and bring the opacity all the way up. And let me click off it to deselect. We can now color it in however we'd like. If you notice here, I use like a dark blue and a light blue. We could do something like that. Click on the green object. Um, make this a darker shade of blue. Something like that. I'll click on the red object to make that... Um, it actually looks pretty good red, but I'll change that to a lighter shade of blue. And click and drag over the whole thing and group it together. And hold Control and Shift in the keyboard and just scale it down a little bit. And I'll click on it again to get the rotation handles and hold control and rotate this around a few steps. One, two, three. So it's going down like that, like a comet would. And if you notice here in the thumbnail, I gave it a black backdrop and I put some stars in there. And if you'd like to do that, just go ahead and create a rectangle like that, going over the whole thing. Go to the select tool, send it to the bottom, lower selection to the bottom. And I'll make this background black or 90% gray. And to make the stars, you just come over to the stars and polygons tool. And the, 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 uh, the settings I used are, I have the star button selected, four corners, spoke ratio 0 0.337, rounded and randomized, both set at zero. And then you just hold control and shift and click and drag and create a star like that. Make that white, and go to the select tool, put this over here. And you just duplicate that a few times. Hitting control D to duplicate, make it a little smaller make this one smaller. I'm holding control and shift in the keyboard to scale these things down to make them smaller. If you don't hold control and shift, it kind of just, uh, it doesn't lock the proportion. So that's why I like to hold control and shift. And that's pretty much it. That's how you can create that simple flat style comet graphic using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.